Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket and I'm not gonna pay for it. Who says you're not gonna pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Atticus Abrams is suing John Maxwell in the amount of $750. Mr. Abrams claims his bandmate and manager took hotel damages out of his pay and says there were other people in the room breaking things. This is a matter of Atticus Abrams versus John Maxwell. You're suing him for $750? That's correct. Um, and why is that? I'm suing him for denying me my portion of the um, contract. Wages? Yes. That's hard for you to say? Your wages? Yes. My money that I earned. That's correct. I want my money. Absolutely. All right, tell me about it. All right, so one of my videos of me singing a black metal song, it went completely viral. And that's how John noticed me. And he asked me if I wanted to uh, be their new lead singer. And I was like, heck yes. Because you like black metal. You like that band. I love black metal, yeah. Okay. All right. So anyway. Um, we had this regular gig in Los Angeles um, over at the Ramshackle Room. We played there once a week. Um, the recent gig we were on was one in Las Vegas. Um, it was completely sold out. I decided to invite a few friends over to the hotel room, just a party. How many hotel rooms did you all have? Uh, we shared one hotel room. And how many people in the band? Um, there's four of us. Oh, okay. Go on. So we got a little rowdy. I mean. So we, you invited people over to the hotel room and it wasn't only you that invited people or did anyone else invite people? It was just me that invited friends over. Well, how do you have all these friends at the, in Las Vegas? Because I make friends quickly. So I they're not routine. friends. But, but very nice people. I really connected with them and mm. I thought they would really, you know, be some fun to hang around with at the hotel room for one night. And how many of these people did you invite to the hotel room? I invited about five. Without asking your fellow band members? I just assumed they'd be okay with it. So it was without asking? Yes. Okay. Go on. Uh, so we partied. Um, we just had some fun, you know, because that's, that's what the rock star life is about. I mean, this guy, he never drinks at all. Um, what kind of rock star is that? One that doesn't drink? Yeah, not very much of a rock star, in my opinion. Why not? Rock star has nothing to do with drinking. It has to do with his skills and talents on that I mean, guitar, whatever instrument you play. What instrument do you play? Bass. The bass, good, guitar. So, that's what a rock star, that's what the life is like. That's why the band is sold out, because people come to hear the music not to watch him drink. But I drink, and so, okay. people love me, so. And he doesn't. He doesn't have to do what you do. Apparently not. Yeah. I think he has more confidence in his skills than you. That's why you drink so much. And he says, I don't need all that to rock it out. <laughs> Go on. But I rock more than he does. OK, let's just get to the point. All right. So anyway, he's denying me my. Because what happened when you brought all these people over to the hotel room? So we partied because he's. And you partied and did yeah. what? So we, I mean, we kind of trashed the room a little bit. Kind of trashed the room a little bit, yeah. meaning that you broke things. OK, so I broke a cheap lamp. That's all I broke. And how much did that cheap lamp cost? I think it was $100. He, he has and what uh, else happened? invoices. Um, so there were stains Bottles on the carpet. Bottles and cans of all around the room and stains on the carpeting, yeah. cigarettes, smoke. Yeah, and I saw these two other people tie bed sheets together and make a rope out of it to climb out the window. Um, Why are you climbing out the window with bed sheets? I don't know. It wasn't me. Like I said, all I did was break the lamp, and he's charging me seven fifty dollars for the total damages, and that leaves me with nothing. So that's what your fee was? Yeah, seven fifty, dollars and your I didn't share? get anything. All right. Okay, let me hear from you. So I started Mr. Maxwell, the non-rock star who doesn't drink, really. Shame on you. I'm just teasing. Go on. Uh, so I started this band, Silver Hammer. Uh, it's a childhood dream to start a metal band. 
Uh, we put it together and we were having some success around Los Angeles and a little bit How in Vegas. How long has the band been in existence? Uh, two years. Okay. Uh, so the lead singer left after one year. Uh, he went to the army. And so one of my bandmates showed me a video of Atticus singing on YouTube. And I asked to meet with him. So we, he does sing pretty well. He does. All right. Yes. Um, so we brought him in. We thought he would be a good fit. And he was. Um, he was an excellent lead singer. Um, he's been with us for about a year. Uh, the stage time was never the problem. He's excellent on stage, excellent performer. It's everything else, the hotel rooms, the travel, the, all the damages that we've had to pay for. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. So I saw him tie the bed sheets, jump out the window, and then there was uh, the incident with the, uh, the microwave where he put his foot through it huh? at one point in the night. I don't know how that happened. He put his foot through the, through the microwave? microwave? Yeah. And later. The skipper, she took my phone and she started taking photos of me. But all of a sudden, a piece of glacier fell, smashing my arm into the railing. Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Atticus Abrams, who is suing John Maxwell for $750. So this is just from the last trip. There was a broken lamp. There were carpet stains that needed removing. Uh, bed sheets needed to be replaced, which he says he saw people tie together and jump out the window. That was him and one of his friends. Um, it was not me. <laughs> How many sheets? Uh, there were three, I believe. Oh, okay. Three sheets. Uh, so the mini bar needed to be restocked, and then there was a maintenance fee as well. Oh, they drank out of the mini bar? Yeah, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but carpet stains, was it just him partying? Wasn't it a lot of other people No, partying? so most of it, a lot of it was him, but most of it was his friends that he brought back. That So well, what were you fans. when all this partying was going on? I was sitting in bed trying to watch TV for a little bit, and then so I left. So they were in the living room area? Yeah, so they okay. were partying, and then I left shortly after that because it got too rowdy. You left from their party? Yeah. And um, you're the owner of the band or the lead? I'm the acting manager. I started the band. Well, uh, what do you mean by acting manager? Is somebody else managing? No, it's just He a, means acting momager. That's what he means. Uh, he never so lets I, us do anything. I mean, come on. I basically book the hotel rooms and the flights and get all the travel arrangements together and make sure everyone gets their cuts. Um, and like, pay everybody. Yes, correct. Except for me. You collect the money. Correct. So you booked the hotel rooms, flights, everything. Correct. All right. And you booked the gigs. Yes. All right. So why did you pay him his 750 Well, what were the other three members of the band when the partying was going on? Um, so they were partying a little bit. Um, they ended up joining in with him, but they I was sober the entire night. Um, and but the other three members of the band were in there partying as well. Yeah. You were the only one who was in the room watching TV. Yeah, and I was the only one that did not drink that entire night. But he was blackout drunk. Uh, the other band members were not as uh, inebriated. Uh, so the damages, I could tell. First well, of all, I really saw him. Well, you don't know who caused the damages because well, you were in that other room. Well, I saw him do some of, I saw him spill wine on the floor. Thank you. The bed sheets. You were, uh, uh, stop being the cross talking. Stop the cross talking. Sorry, right Your Honor. You saw him do what? So I saw him tie the bed sheets, jump out the window. Um, there were the wine on the floor. I saw him and one of his friends. I don't even know what they were doing in the corner. Um, and then there was uh, the incident with the, uh, the microwave where he put his foot through it huh? at one point in the night. I don't know how that happened. He put his foot through the through microwave? Through the microwave, yeah. And so that needed what? to be replacing. Huh? What was the microwave? What was it? Where was it? It was just on the, the, the nightstand. The, the counter, counter? In, the, yeah. in the, so is this a hotel or a motel? It's a hotel. So it was on that small counter? Yeah, correct. And why did you put your foot through the microwave? <sighs> you don't so, know. So, yeah, exactly. I don't remember anything that happened. You were blasted. Yes, I, I've been blacked out drunk a few times. That's ridiculous. I mean, I, the point is that he says that I always am responsible for damages done in the hotel room. And it's always on me. So well, I don't know about I don't always, understand but that. this like, particular time. So you didn't give him his money? For this time, correct. So we've been At pulling- At least something. Um, His share was $750? Correct. Okay. And so that was, and we used that to cover the damages. And in the past, we've used just a cut from all of the band members equally to, to cover any damages that he had done to other And so why do you rooms. do that this time? Um, it was the last draw this time. Uh, we were getting tired of it. 
I talked to the other band members. But the other band members were in there partying. Yeah. Um, but they know that he was the one that was out of control. No, and... no. Everybody, they were in there partying as well. See, now, as a responsible manager or acting manager, whichever you want to call it, and you said he's been doing this a while and he's been with you a year, at some point, you have to, and you should have said after the first time he did it, don't bring anybody to this room. Don't bring anybody over here after our events. If you want to party and have fun, go downstairs to the bar, go downstairs, to, go upstairs to the bar, wherever, but don't bring strangers in this room. No party. There's four of us in here. So you can't do that. Mm -hmm. you, should, you let it get out of hand when you didn't stop it the first time around. Yeah, that's correct. And yeah. if, you're the, if you're the manager and the other band members are participating, then it becomes a band problem, mm -hmm. and it becomes a band expense because that room is the band's room, the entire band. So you can't just say it's him, especially when the others joined in the party. You may not have, but they did. But more important than that is the law does not allow you as an employer to deduct somebody's, uh, to, de to deduct damages or something that someone owes you, um, a debt or things like that from a person's paycheck without a court order. You can't just do that. What you have to do is take him into small claims court or wherever you want to take him and say that he damaged his property. Um, but you can't take it from his wages. You can, you can, you can sue him for it. And you could say to him, we had to do this and you need to repay, but you can't take it from earned wages. He worked. And once he worked, he was entitled to his pay. And you can't just start taking stuff out of people's paycheck because of what they do uh, as an employee. So now you can get it from him in another manner, but you can't do it in this manner. So judgment for the plaintiff, $750. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $750. Have fun trying to make $750 playing in front of empty clubs. Have fun reading about us in the headlines. Coming up. I said, you need to get behind the red line. She said, no, I just want to take one more picture. I said, you can't. We've got to get behind the red line. People can get hurt if you don't listen and take direction. Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Susan Saleta is suing Captain Russo Minza in the amount of $689. Ms. Saleta claims her excitement over a glacier tour was quickly chilled after a piece of ice fell on her, injuring her arm. In the matter of Susan Saleta versus Russo Minza, uh, I understand you're suing him for $689 for the cost of a ticket and uh, your medical bill, you received an injury as a result of an outing on his boat. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so tell me what happened. Well, Your Honor, when we got to the hotel, they offered us this free one-day pass for the glacier tour, mm -hmm. and I decided to take advantage of it. When we pulled up next to the glaciers, they were huge. And after a little bit, the captain said that we were going to be pulling away from the glaciers, so for everyone to come behind the red line. Meanwhile, I was finally in place to get my picture with the glacier. And the skipper, she took my phone and she started taking photos of me. But all of a sudden, a piece of glacier fell, smashing my arm into the railing. I was screaming in pain. And because this happened, it ruined the rest of my trip to Alaska. I didn't get to do any of my plans. And I would like Captain Russo to pay me back my $689. How did you get to $689? That was the cost of my medical bill. All right, let me hear from you, Skipper. Are yes. you the skipper, the owner of what? What do we call you? I am the owner, but you call me Captain Russo. Oh, Captain Russo, I'm sorry. All right, Captain, what you got to say? The honor. she came in full knowledge of how she's supposed to act on the boat. She how do you know she had full knowledge? Because we taught her several times. We posted all over the board, all the rules, safety rules. I announced all the safety rules. The skippers are down there announcing the safety rules. After I make announcement, it's time to go behind the line. The skippers in make further announcements and bring everybody behind the lines for safety's sakes. These glaciers, nine-tenths of them are under the water. And they are dangerous enough that you get too close, they fall off, and they hurt. Coming up. She did not literally make me, but honestly, it was a choice of get this woman a picture so I could get her behind the line because everybody else was waiting for her to get behind the line. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. 
We're back with the case of Susan Saletta, who is suing Captain Russo Minza for medical expenses. How long have you been running this boat, these glazer years. tours? 24 years. I have a perfect record. I, nobody on my ship has ever been hurt. I have a great crew. They're all well trained. Anybody have a picture of the rules on the ship, the boat? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody have a picture of this red line on yes, the boat? Yes, I hope there's something that shows me where that red line is. Just the rules. Oh, just the rules. Okay, stay behind the marked yellow line unless told otherwise by your captain or tour guide. So where's the red line you all talking about? The red line is the yellow line. I don't know why it's a misprint. <laughs> I do okay. not know why it's a misprint. All right, stay behind the line. Okay, so were you, you're the captain, so you're giving all the orders, right? From the bridge, yes, ma'am. And yes, uh, so you can't see what the passengers are doing behind you, right? No, that's why my skippers are down there. Okay, so and everything. this young lady is your skipper? Yes. Who's biting to tell me something. Step up here, ma'am. Permission to speak, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. You are? I am Ben, I, I, I am Ben Osamato. And you're one of the skippers. I am the main skipper. The and main I am also the one who took her picture because she made me. <laughs> not literally. Okay, but, don't go there. She uh, made you. Tell me what happened. She did not literally make me, but honestly, it was a choice of get this woman a picture so I could get her behind the line because everybody else was waiting for her to get behind the line. If she hadn't, she might have gotten hurt. And I said it to her directly. I said, you need to get behind the red line. She said, no, I just want to take one more picture. I said, you can't. We've got to get behind the red line. People can get hurt if you don't listen and take direction. Judge Maybelline's verdict when Justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Why did you take the camera to take the picture? after the captain said, get behind the line. Because it was either make that choice or make the choice to physically pick her up and take her across the line. She wasn't budging. No, it was, she wasn't either to, it was either to not take a picture or let her stand there behind and not go behind the line and get hit. And I didn't want her to get hit, Your Honor. But she did get hit. You're right. And you contributed. I don't see how I could have made well, a better choice. Well, I do choice. see how you contributed okay. because while you allowed her to stay there for that one minute, one second longer after the captain said, get behind the line, she was in the line of fire for the glazier. But if which I you knew was a possibility because you've been on that boat a number of times in that same area. I'm gonna do what's called contributory negligence. Both of you contributed to her injury. So I am not going to order them to pay at all. I'm going to order them to pay half, one half of the cost of her medical bill. That's the judgment of the court. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $344.50. Next time you need to be more responsible for people's safety. Next time you need to follow the rules when you're told. I'm sorry this happened and it will never happen again. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.